God asked Jonah, Jonah, why are you angry? She said, why, why, why are you angry? <laughs> why, why are you angry? Moses, Israel needed water to drink. You know, Israel needs water to drink. Go stand before, you see, before the elders and speak to the rock for the waters to come out for my people to drink. And then these guys went there. <laughs> my God. This guy went there and he struck the rock rather. God says, go there, speak to the rock. Speak to the rock. The guy had a nose rock. A nose rod. <laughs> he used his rod for the second time. The waters came out for them abundantly. But God said, because he did not sanctify me in their eyes. It's not just about the water. You might think it's just the water. It goes beyond that. He did not sanctify me in their eyes. He did not sanctify me in their, heart, in their eyes. The heart matters so much. Now, look at, so the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. I, the Lord, sent the heart. I tried the reins, even, I, even to give to every man according to his ways. Wonderful. And according to the fruit of his doings. So we have the ways and the fruits of the doings. It is not what you've done. But the effect of what you've done, I, the Lord, I for me, I examine the heart. I try your reins. Why did you do what you did? Is it to glorify me or to glorify yourself? Is it for men to see you? Is it to receive the praise of men, the honor of men? What made you do what you did? That's what God does. So then again, I, the Lord, the verse 10, Jeremiah 17, 10. It says, I, the Lord, said the heart, I try the reins, even to give to every man, according to his ways, and according to the fruits of his doings, to the fruits of his actions. You have to be stable. In the things of God, you have to be stable. You have to be stable. If your heart is fixed on God, if your hope is on the Bible says so in the verse saying, Blessed, blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord, whose hope the Lord is. In Proverbs 28. The wicked flee it when no man pursue, pursue it, but the righteous are bold as lion. Bold. Why would I stake all my hopes on the Lord? Yes, he is faithful. I count God to be faithful. To be faithful. I still got all my hopes. Hmm. All my confidence. Everything. Because I know. Like Job said, my Redeemer leave it. It doesn't matter. He's the God of process. And I trust him. I know my Redeemer leave it. Praise God. Okay. In the Message Bible, the verse 10 say, reads, But I, God, set the heart and examine the mind. I get to the heart of the, of the human. I get to the root 
of the of things i treat them as they really are not as they pretend to be you cannot pretend before god you can't pretend it took god to look into the heart of you know michael and know that mm, this daughter of saul has despised the king <coughs> praise god it took god to try the reins god tried the reins see and finds out that listen it's not only about uh the king the king dancing but this guy this woman has despised the act of worship itself Now, if you want to live a true Christian life, live inside out. Christianity is lived on the inside. It has much more to do with the account of God. The focus or the emphasis of all you're doing should be on God. In laying up treasures and what have you, if it, the focus is God, you surely have your reward. You know, it gives to every man according to the fruits of his ways. But I, God, search the heart and examine the mind. I get to the heart of the human. So God get to the heart of the human, the weakness. The weak point. They get to the root of things. Why is this guy dancing? I was someone said, man of God, I really like your preaching. <laughs> but then at the back of his mind, if you if only you know, <laughs> if only you know, or he had known how your face looked during your preaching. You know, it's interesting. Only God knows. Men will make see, they will pass comments that they don't really mean. And that's what God says for us not to put our trust in man. Because they can pretend. Now let's continue. Thank you, Spirit of God. So in um Proverbs twenty four, right? Um, shall I do zeledi se krisko peli and days? Thank you, Holy Spirit. The verse twenty one, yes. My son, fear thou the king, fear the Lord and the king. Meddle not with them that are given to change. See, we are admonished not to meddle with those who are given to change. Who are not stable in their ways because they are not blessed. You see, it's a curse to be unstable. It's a curse to be unstable. It's a curse to be unstable. One needs to be stable. This is what I do, and I remain loyal. Oh, as for me, if I I come to you and realize you you are not really uh, giving me what I want, then I have to leave and then look for another place. That's the the weakness of man. The Bible shows us what to do. You must add value to wherever you find yourself and wherever you, you see, wherever you go, you are the, you are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Some Christians are not looking for where there are no trouble so they can be there. We love a troubled world because we are solution of what good is medicine if there's no sickness. The power of every medicine is revealed in what? In an environment of sickness. So if you claim you are a solution, bundle of success, solution, and what have you, there's no examination success without exams. So whatever you have, there should be questions. You pit your wit against the instructor's questions. And then you score. Why do you run away? Let me show you something from the book of um, Genesis. 
the Bible says not to meddle with those who are giving the change, right? There are people who are giving the change and they think it's good. I work with this multimedia company. If I realize, Charlie, there's no money that I'll leave. Ask, ask, ask Naomi. Naomi left Israel and God visited Israel. She, she, you know, she knows that she couldn't enjoy. She could not enjoy the things that God brought their way. She left them. When she returned, God had visited them. She left. <laughs> there are men like that who would um, who'd never believe in God, in the God, God, God of process. And they will come. They will come again with tears. Do not be giving to those who are, you know, who meddle, you know, don't meddle, don't meddle with those who are giving to change. Who are giving to change. You read for the amplifier, please look for that scripture and amplify for me. Amplify version, bra bra um Ignatius. It has to do with um allegiance to us well. That you hold your allegiance to this. Later, they change their desire, their appetite, and they make their own. See, God gives them a king, God gives them a leader, and they change their own leader. They just believe in change. They want everything very fast. So if um, it is not uh, uh, meeting their, their preconceived imaginations regarding what a leader should be like, then they will first do change very fast. If it suits their selfish ends, they will stay. But if you change, then they will also change. Though they are unstable, they want you to be stable. <laughs> oh my God. I, I, I mean, I belong to NDC. Later, I belong to MPP. I belong to NDC, MPP. Who are you? They call themselves floating what? <laughs> you must be a voice. Where do you stand? Where do you stand? Proverbs 24, verse 1 in the Amplified. Okay, so I want to read from the book of um, Genesis 49. Um, I think the verse 4. I like the fourth, the judgment. Uh, it's a blessing that the father was blessing his sons, Reuben. So let's start. So Genesis 49. I want to start from the verse 2. Gather yourself together and hear ye sons of Jacob and hearken unto Israel your father. It, let's start from verse 1. Okay, so, uh, my son, reverently fear the Lord and the King, and do not associate with those who are given to change of allegiance. You see, um, people that they are to, to, be, uh, to hold allegiance to. No, as for me, if you are that time, I will just change you and bring my own. There are others that, see, <laughs> they, they even raise their own pastors. <laughs> My God. You see the sin of Israel. God was their king himself. As their golden king. He said they wanted to be like the other nations. Because some of they have not despised you. Don't, you don't be thinking about your small position there. It's not about you. It's me they have ignored. They're just saying they want king, but deep down their heart, they want a king that they can also dictate to. They want to make their own king. I'm not allowed it. They are trying to escape my rules to establish their own human statutes. Now Jacob called unto him, unto, 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 called unto his sons and said, Gather yourself together that I may tell you that which will befall you in the last days. This is what is going to befall you in the last days. And so he went ahead. Follow this. And see, it's a case in itself. Verse 3 Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might. And the beginning of my strength. You are my might. The beginning of my strength. The excellency of dignity. Wow. And the excellency of power. 
the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power, the beginning of my strength. Wow. My mind, the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. Unstable as water, thou shalt not excel. <laughs> Unstable as water, thou shalt not excel. Unstable as water. Say, don't do not you know do not associate or do not meddle with those who are giving the change. Though you are my first born, my mind, the excellency of my whatever, the beginning of my strength, the excellency of my dignity, and that of, of, of power. But because you're unstable, you shall not excel. There's no unstable person that excels. The Bible says in James 1 verse 8 that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. In all his ways. We looked at the book of um, Ezekiel 28 and we saw that in verse 15, Lucifer was perfect in all his ways until iniquity was found, until it changed. Is your heart set on God? Is it fixed on God? God knows your heart. So look at it. Thou shalt not accept because thou, thou, thou hast went up. Thou went up to thy father's bed. And the, the, then the father thou, thou ate. He went up to my couch. So the others. It's not the same thing Lucifer did. And the Bible said this, he corrupted his sanctuary. Sometimes the ideas that come to the mind of people to speak against, dig, you know, dignities and what have you, is too high. You cannot mount that chi, that height of disobedience. You can't. It's wrong. Don't try it. Don't try it. So the Bible says, for doing this, I know you are unstable. Stay here and I know, oh, no, I want to be there. Because if you are able to sleep with your father's wife, it means that you are inheriting your father. And that is exactly what the devil did. And he told man, the day that you eat of the tree shall be like God. See, pride comes from the heart. It's from the heart. From the heart. And people who are proud don't really see it. They don't really see it. They don't really see it. I, 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 I shared a message um, last year on pride and those things I shared. Um, I was always talking about growing up into him in all things to us. So a message, I think, in series, we shared that. We looked at some of the things that are, in, you know, um, in, in, inhibits our growth. We have to grow. They stand against the growth of, of the spirit man. We saw some of these things. They surfaced. Wherefore, laying aside all malice, all hypocrisy, what have you? They are all the sins of the heart. But because you're unstable as water, you shall not excel. Then he says, because thou went up to my to, to thy to thy father's bird, then the father thou it. He went up to my couch. Why must you go to the couch of your father? Why must you defile? Wrong desire. Wrong appetite. But there was a rationale behind that. 
Why did he do it? Now look at this with me. So credo zevelia masha take it is lego seketia da doze. First of all, chapter sixteen. First Samuel 16, verse 1. And then, uh, Zilo Rababa Shaladei Shemeketize. Then we shall look at it for 15, but 16, 1. 16, 1. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Lord said unto Samuel, How long will thou mourn for, for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thy own with oil and go. I'll send thee to Jesse, the the battle mind, the battle mind. Um, for I have provided me a king among. And interesting. Um, as we continue, you realize. Let's continue. Verse two. And Samuel said, How can I go if Saul hear of it? He heard he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take an ephah with thee. And say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. And call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I, I name unto thee. And someone did that which the Lord spake, and said unto, and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming, and said, Come thou peaceably. And he said, Peaceably, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify ourselves and come. And come with me to the sacrifice. And and he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. And it came to pass, when they were come, he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before me, before him. So look at this guy, Eliab. He looked at him. said, Wow. This is the Lord's burst. The Lord's anointed. I can see the I perceive this is the one God anoint as king of Israel. Because he had all the physique and everything on the on the out on the on the, on the outward appearance shows that this guy is a king, he worth being a king. But look at what the Bible says in verse 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on his height, on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. I have refused him. That means God has God had already gone ahead to set his heart. And God had rejected him already. I have rejected him. Just as I told you, I have rejected someone. I have refused this guy. <laughs> don't look on the stature of this guy because I have refused him for the Lord see it not as man see it so you may you may be seeing something different but I am God and I see from the heart for man look at look at it so God says do not look on the height of, of his stature because why this is so? Because he has refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. How? For man looketh on the outward appearance. But the Lord looketh on the heart. The kind of heart that a person has. And not the outward physical appearance. But how the heart appears to God. What it appears to be. What is the quality of your being, the quality of your heart? That is why when one becomes born again, God regenerates your heart again, your spirit, and put love, meekness, temperance, all the God expects you to pursue your spiritual work or that genuine in the light of his word. Many are doing so much. 
they are giving so much but so long as it's not coming from the heart it matters nothing to god the giving must first be from the heart when god asked father abraham to sacrifice his son in the book of genesis 22 did he do it yes he did god saw that he had already killed his son it was on his heart to do more than willing to do what is the condition of your heart one day david decides to build god a house and god stopped him and god said remember where i took you from why would god say that because of the condition of the heart because of the condition of the heart pride pride you see uh some you know first summer 15. now this guy was told what to do he went out there and kept verse 9 but saw and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep and the oxen and the fatling, the lamb and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them, but everything that was vile and refused that they destroyed utterly. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repents me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he's turned back from following me. Have you seen it? He's unstable, he became unstable. He turned from following God. And curse be anyone like that. <coughs> the Bible says, "He that put the arm to the the hand to the plow and lose back is not fit. You don't tame. You pursue. You have to see the end of your faith. The end of your faith. God said, "This guy has stopped following me. What did he do?" Yes, he kept some parts. Was it meant for himself? No. But look at it. Then, and when Samuel rose up early, you know, rose rose early to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel saying, Saul came, Saul came to Camel, and behold, he set, he set him up a, a place, and he's gone about and passed on and, and gone on to, to Gilgal. And Samuel said to Saul, and Saul said to him, Blessed be thou of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. And someone said, What meaneth these then this bleating of the of, of the sheep in the in my ear and the lowing of the of the auction which I hear? And some Saul said, They have brought them from the Amalekite, for the people spared the best of the sheep and of the auction to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. Then someone said unto, 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 unto Saul, Saul, Stay, I will tell thee what the Lord has said unto me this, this night. And he said unto him, Say on. Someone said, When thou was lit in thy own sight, was thou not made the head of the tribe of Israel, and the Lord anointed thee king of Israel? And Lord said, and Lord said, Send thou, you know, send thou on a journey, and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Malachites, and fight them until they be they be consumed wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the lord but didst fly upon the spoil and did evil in the sight of the lord and some was said unto saul ye have obeyed the voice of the lord and saul said unto Samuel, yea i have obeyed the voice of the lord and i've gone the way with the lord sent me and i've brought agag the king of amalekite and i've utterly destroyed the amalekite but the people took of the spoil, sheep, oxen, and the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. Interesting. And someone said, As the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice, as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than what sacrifice, and to hearken than what the, the, the fat of rams. For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. If rebelled, and this it. You know, many people say that an evil spirit came from the Lord, blah, blah, blah. God doesn't have an evil spirit like that. Look at it. 
For rebellion is as a sin of what? Witchcraft. The guy practiced witchcraft. Became a witch. Look at it. And stubbornness is as iniquity, is as iniquity and idolatry. Is sought enchantment. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected thee from being king. And someone said on this, and some and Saul said to someone, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy word, because I feared the people and obeyed not their voice. Now therefore I pray thee, pardon my sins and turn, turn again with me that I may worship the Lord. Turn again with me. Now, he wants the eyes of the people to see him are still keeping the anointing, are still walking with the Lord. God needs people to be genuine with him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want us to end tonight's session. We shall continue this week. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. As you, you unravel unto us, Lord, the condition of the heart. The mystery of the darkness of the heart. For you are said, Lord, the imagination of the heart of man is desperately wicked, Lord, right from his youth. But you know, when your hand comes upon the, the, the same man through the rebirth, there's a change. And as a spirit, Listen us, we change and we walk the work of righteousness. I pray for your people, Lord. Let your heart be upon them and let them follow after the things that you value. Let them, Lord, judge as you judge in Jesus' name. Amen. I believe you're going to walk in righteousness and judge from God's perspective. God bless you. <laughs>